Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. My uh, main focus in this series of videos is going to be the uh, Arctic sea ice and the general overall Arctic region and what's happening there. Recently, I discussed how the polar vortex uh, seemed to have shifted to be centered over Greenland um, as we lose more and more sea ice. And this, um, you know, this could become a permanent feature in a world without any sea ice. So I'm going to talk all about the uh, latest um, physical behavior of the sea ice in the Arctic. And I'll also talk about projections as to when we can expect the first uh, blue ocean event, uh, the first year when come September, there's less than a million square kilometers of ice in the Arctic. And of course that will have enormous ramifications on the global food supplies, et cetera. And um, I'll also give a couple, uh, you know, you can't escape the coronavirus pandemic, which is, which is spreading exponentially around the planet. So I'll just make a few comments on some of on, on some of the latest um, some of my latest thoughts on that as well. But my focus is going to be on the the Arctic uh, sea ice. So let me get right into uh, my discussions here. Uh, first of all, um, you know the last blog uh, from a few days ago. I was talking about the Arctic polar vortex shifting from the North Pole to Greenland at least temporarily talked about the ozone hole that uh, the unusual and intense ozone hole over the Arctic. Normally this is a southern hemisphere Antarctic phenomena and uh, you know how that was related to, to sea ice loss. So this is a very uh, key you know very telling picture. This is humanity here. This is the COVID-19 uh, attacking us. This is the upcoming economic crisis related to both the, the uh, disease, but also to climate change. And then we've got climate change here. You know, we cannot forget about climate change, the big, the biggest fish in the ocean, basically, um, that can consume everything else. Um, so just a, a, a reminder from, you know, if you haven't watched the previous video, uh, please do so. You know, I said about one and a half years ago that the Arctic sea ice loss will shift the jet stream center of rotation to the Greenland center, the center of cold at 73 degrees north latitude. And this shift occurred temporarily, you know, a week or two ago when the center of rotation moved near the polar, uh, near the northern tip of Greenland. Um, and because of the tight polar vortex, you know, as the surface warms, less heat is radiated up, right? More is absorbed by the surface, so less is radiated up, so the upper atmosphere can cool. This create, has created a large ozone hole over the Arctic, which was mentioned over a decade ago as an Arctic tipping point um, by Lenten papers. Um, and then, of course, with an offset polar vortex, there's more air exchange between low and high latitudes, so the Arctic sea ice peaks earlier you know, maybe, uh, maybe related to that because more heat is being pumped up into the Arctic and more cold is being pumped to lower latitudes. So since the sea ice peaked, it's been rapidly declining. And just a couple things, um, you know, on a personal note, um, you know, I hope that you're all coping as well as possible in these dire times of coronavirus exponential growth. Um, my cats are definitely behaving differently because, you know, there's, we're around during the day. We rarely leave the house, so the cats are kind of going a bit antsy. I've been trying to exercise as much as possible, um, so I think I'm in the best shape I've been in for decades. Like, I'm, 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 getting, I'm doing basically 25 kilometer or 14, 15 mile bikes every few days, trying to walk, um, you know, multiple numbers of kilometers or miles each day. And um, according to my, um, my wearable device, which monitors heart rate and everything else, um, my resting heart rate seems to have lowered from about 52 to 47. So, you know, I think that's good uh, to have a lower resting heart rate. Also boosting your immune system 
lots of veggies, vitamins, other stuff. You know, and uh, you know, we have to be concerned about our, our mental health, right? So, you know, please share some of your own coping stories and inspiration. Okay, so that's basically, um, you know, my last blog. Thank you, David Korn, for putting it together. You know, he's been a wonderful help for many, many years with my, um, you know, getting this information out to the public. Uh, this is the Arctic sea ice, you know, peaking um, this year, 2020. This is other years. Notice the other years, the most recent years are all on the lower side. 2007 was a, was a very record minimum at the time. 2011 was, uh, 2012 was the most recent um, record minimum. Um, and there's 2012 up here, but most of the most of the uh, peaking, the peaking is basically you know getting lower and lower. This, this is in the March uh, record, you know the the maximum extent levels. Um, also, you know, please consider donating to support my work. Um, you know, you don't need a PayPal account. You just need a credit card, and you can just click here to do it, or you can click on the uh, PayPal link. Thank you for all the people that have donated in the past to, to support my research and videos. Now, go, I'll go to Twitter here, and I tweeted out this message um, recently um, here, which I think is very important. You know, I take it to heart. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. You know, this is Lord of the Rings. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide or to have influence on. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. And this is, uh, you know, of course, written by J.R.R. Tolkien and appears in The Lord of the Rings. You know, it does remind me of the serenity saying or the serenity prayer, you know, dear God, or you can leave that off. You know, please um, give me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change the courage to change the things that I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. So this, you know, all we have is to decide is what to do with the time that is given us, you know, and I'm continuing to use a lot of my time to try to get, you know, relevant scientific information to you on abrupt climate change, but also most recently on the coronavirus. Um, of course, you know, we know that things cascade, so you know, because so many people are unemployed in various countries, including the U.S., um, they rely more and more on food banks, and the U.S. food banks are seeing unprecedented uh, demand. Um, so the U.S. is actually facing a will be fa is facing a hunger crisis. You know, as millions you lose jobs and food banks are drying up unless the government steps in. Um, coronavirus, what can you do and how can it end? I had an interesting interview with Alex Smith of EcoShock Radio. So let me just talk a little bit about that. Um, so Alex, first, this was just released, um, posted April 1st, so yesterday by Radio EcoShock. Um, you know, listen to the show, it's great stuff. A UK nurse teacher, Dr. John Campbell, talks about how, you know, you can do better to withstand the virus and then I talk about first how Canada blundered into disaster and then how clearing the air the, the reduction of global dimming could actually release about 25 years worth of warming you know over the weeks and day, weeks and months to come okay so um you know, just Google the title here, Google Radio, you know, Radio EcoShock and have a look, you know, listen to the show and also the, the, the um, you know, re read the, the, the blog here. Uh, you know, it talks about the, he's in the UK, you know, they ignored the problem. They thought everybody can get a herd immunity. There was a festival, um, horse racing, um, you know, a thousand had already died in Italy. There were already deaths in the UK, but they had these races with 251,000 fans on March 12th, you know. How could they do, do this? Think of the spreading here of, of the, the virus. So, so there's lots of good tips of how we can cope, 
you know, on an individual basis about, you know, if we get sick, if we get really sick, for example, um, you know, if we sit up, at least our lungs can drain. If we lie on our stomachs, at least our lungs can drain a bit, but don't lie flat on your back if you get really sick. Hydration is key. Drink liquids every 20 minutes or so during the illness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and Alex comments on how the pandemic could end and you know, there's questions about how long the virus can survive outside the human body. Um, and lots of really interesting stuff also on the necessity to wear face masks. Now, the colossal blunder that I talk about is, is uh, you know, the number of people that have come into Canada from overseas. Over a million people, you know, went to the U.S. and other, the U.S., uh, for March break and then all those people came back and uh, think of all of the people that brought back the virus with them so you know when there's a plague you're not supposed you're supposed to have less travel so Canada almost every other country in the world is 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 not heeding this so the Chinese news year many Chinese uh, working overseas for example in Italy went back to China then they went back to Italy Italy became one of the worst places um, in Canada. It's a spring break for students or snowbirds that go down to the U.S., Florida for the winter and come back. You know, there's still, it's about one in 37 Canadians, almost 3% of the population return from the March break, many from Florida. You know, uh, there's, you know, in India, there's 470 million migrant workers. They've lost jobs in the cities and they've been walking home to their villages across India. So think of the spread of the disease. You know, we're, we're a very connected society. You know, cruise ships is mentioned. Uh, you, know, and, you know, people in cruise ships are, are stuck off coastlines, not able to get off. I mean, look at the cruise ship off Florida right now. Um, and military ships like the U.S. aircraft carrier, you know, 5,000 crew, hundreds and hundreds are infected. You know, they'll be getting off the ship. You know, um, as the economic pain continues, Alex was saying there'll probably be more internal migration in North America as the economy forces some families to consolidate whenever they, wherever they best can to survive a long-term depression. He thinks maybe worse in the 30s. You know, your own kids may move back in, growing food. If this internal migration happens, then the disease, of course, will move with it. Okay, so, it, you know, it talked about a lot of different things in the interview, but I, I guess the key point is that, uh, you know, the global dimming, you know, I did three videos. I tried to estimate how the lack of aerosols, the cleaning of the air, would actually cause a warming of the climate. Putting some numbers on there, you know, this is a real-life thing happening, so we'll actually be able to do those measurements, and those measurements will come out. So, you know, definitely read Alex's blog and listen to the programs both with Dr. John Campbell for coronavirus tips and myself to talk talking about uh, warming due to the lack of aerosols, a great reduction of aerosols. Now this is on on Facebook. Um, okay. Um, so you know I did the here, here's the the Lord of the Rings quote again. Um, this is a link to Extinction Radio, um, and lots of stuff um, is always being posted on Facebook and, and Twitter. Now I'm going to get into the gist of my um, main talking um, for, the, for these, this series of videos, and that's back to the Arctic. So Arctic sea ice graph is a vital site for, finding, for keeping up to date, up to the, you know, getting almost near time uh, near real-time information, and I'm going to focus um, on the Arctic sea ice figures from Zach Labe's uh, great website, and also, you know, so have a look at all of the, the data here, and recall, remember that there's a map of the Arctic. There's an excellent map of the Arctic here, here to put things in context. So, back, so Zach Labe, um, his website, which is linked to from the Arctic sea ice graphs, what you can see is you've got the Arctic sea ice extent here plotted throughout the year. Um, this is the 1980s mean, 90s mean, 1990s, 2000s, and then the years, and I'm going to continue this in my next video. Thanks for listening.